So my origin story is kind of fun. I was adopted, grew up in this loving all white family in Morgantown, West Virginia. And then years later, I went to Sierra Leone to meet my birth father and the entire tribe. But first, I found all of these African family members who live in the United States through this incredible private investigator. So I called them and I started getting phone calls. Hello, I'm your Uncle Ali, your father's favorite uncle. Hello, I'm your Auntie Jenny. So I started to meet all of these family members in Sierra Leone who live in the United States. And it was so special and so wonderful. And then my birth father called. I got to hear his voice for the first time. And, I, and we planned a trip to go there. So I actually got to meet him, meet the tribe, and I was welcomed by hundreds of people singing and dancing. When I arrived, my father gave me this beautiful green African dress and he had a matching green shirt. And when we arrived, everyone parted and all the women of the village came forward wearing the same green dress that I had been given singing, we're preparing for Sarah in Mende. And it was this whole new world. My family runs a chiefdom of 70,000. My uncle is the president in the country and we're doing all these wonderful things together. It really takes a village. Meeting my family, my life has changed completely, my birth family. And my parents who adopted me, I took them to Sierra Leone and we all started to work together. And we started to see when working together and really asking questions and learning about the community without making assumptions it was really about the need for clean drinking water, a huge issue, a lot of people dying of waterborne diseases and not having access in the provinces. So my brother and I are taking on with the community, having clean drinking water in the entire country um, by probably in about the next five years, which is a huge undertaking, but we're taking it on. I got interested in Web3 and I really got interested in the blockchain because in Sierra Leone, a lot of people don't have access to bank accounts. About 12.4% of people have bank accounts or access, which can be even more than other countries. And there's really a huge underbanked community that needs support. So we started talking with Harmony and the conversation was, well, what's really needed? Well, people don't have access to bank accounts. Well, what if we could train developers on the ground in Sierra Leone because the people in Sierra Leone really know what's needed, not a bunch of amazing Solidity developers in Silicon Valley, but really people on the ground who can learn how to code. And so we're creating a program to have that happen so they can build on the blockchain and actually create these bank accounts for people. And let me tell you what, if we could actually, sending money to Sierra Leone or doing projects there, it's a lot of work, it's challenging, things that we take for granted. So this whole new development can make a huge impact and really help other people have access and have equity, which is needed. Rollout, we're looking at, we've put in a grant to Harmony about what this can look like. And we also have, we have two teams on the ground in Sierra Leone who are talking to universities to look at who are the coders, who are the Solidity developers that could really learn how to do this. And um, so that's, that's what we're already doing. So we have the grant in, we actually have the team on the ground, and we're actually looking to have approximately a thousand coders to start building, and well, learning first, and then building on the blockchain. So it's kind of, it's going to take the next six to seven months, roughly, to get it all completely underway. Actually, I could be wrong, it might only take about three but three to six months, and then it'll probably take the next, within the next year, we should have some coders ready to start working on the blockchain. What's realistic in the next three to five years? I think we're starting with the coders and really having them actually work inside the community within universities, and also having some of the younger people in the community actually teach their parents and grandparents how to use this because most people in Sierra Leone have access to cell phones and that's the access to everything that's being built. And so when they start training and working with people in the community, that's when it can ripple out. And I think it'll make, no, I don't think, I know it will make a huge difference and provide access for people who did not have access before. It's new and it's new for a lot of us, you know, in, in the Western world, but also in Sierra Leone, people are still really trying to wrap their head around it, understand how will it support our community? Do we want this? But I think inside of the universities that we're working with, with coders already, 
they're very interested in what they know is coming with their curiosity. It's about culture, community, and curiosity and coming together. So we're very excited about it. So they are very interested, which is good. Can we get it done with $100,000? We may need more, but I think starting there with grassroots to get it moving, I think will be a great start. And I think that'll be perfect to start with. We'll see if we need more. Land rights are some things that people could do. Actually, people having access to getting loans to create their own business and having not going through the whole banking system. Banks are wonderful, but also when you don't have access, then you can't even get a loan to start a business or buy a home or create whatever you want in your community. So this is something that can be extremely innovative and impact so many different generations. And I think that's what's next inside of our communities and what we're looking for inside of the different countries in Africa. I think that inside of the decentralized realm, I think some people may start to use it in that way to buy a home and so on or have access. But I think what's happened is that so few people have had access in specifically in developing countries, but also in the United States for that matter, that I think it can actually provide that kind of access um, to larger groups of people who didn't have it before. And that's what I think is so powerful about this is the equity that starts getting created inside of this conversation. So people who might have grown up in a rural village in Sierra Leone could have maybe the same opportunity as someone who grew up in a Manhattan. So I'm just saying, I think it can be really powerful. My family's chiefdom of 70,000, we really come together to work on projects and listen to each other's voices. And what I love about Harmony is Harmony does exactly the same thing. It's like this village in Silicon Valley and this village in Sierra Leone coming together to start working together in Harmony, which I think is going to be very powerful for the whole country. I haven't been to Sierra Leone since December 2019. We're hoping to go sometime this spring or early fall so we can really get things moving but it has been challenging not to be able to be with family and hug each other and say how are you doing and my birth father actually did have a stroke during this um, pandemic and it was very hard to not just want to jump on a plane and get there and help take care of things but you know with technology and being able to get on facetime or you know zoom and all these different platforms we were able to connect and just work together and that's what's so valuable about all this technology moving forward.